Joining me now on the phone, we've got uh, Neil Fletcher from the BC Wildlife Federation, uh, who will be in town on Saturday with a very interesting project. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Terry. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing good, thanks. The sun's shining here in the Kootenays. You might be happy to know. I don't know if you're uh, how, how it works to map marshes in the rain, but it's been uh, torrential here for the last few days, so hopefully it'll dry up a little bit. We're looking forward to a sunny day on Saturday. Yeah, good. Um, so, Neil, can you describe a little bit what uh, Mapping Our Marshes is all about? Absolutely. Uh, Mapping Our Marshes is a one-day workshop. It's free for um, any citizen group or uh, individual who wants to come and join us. Um, the uh, purpose of Mapper Marshes is to map with the GPS units underappreciated wetlands that uh, are in the area of Nelson, uh, Castlegar, and Selmo. And uh, our hope is to um, get these put onto a community mapping network, uh, which is uh, hosting a BC Wetlands Atlas. Um, so uh, from that, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, raise awareness about wetlands that are in the area and to help better protect them. Um, Neil, this, uh, where did this idea come from of having kind of citizen uh, engagement uh, in this mapping project? Um, well, a lot of governments are strapped for cash when it comes to uh, doing the monitoring themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when they originally mapped wetlands in BC, uh, they interpreted a lot of air photos to do this work. Okay. Unfortunately, they've missed a lot of the smaller wetlands, and uh, they're very important as part of the whole landscape for protecting connectivity between the larger wetlands. And often, when a development occurs, it's only after it's been approved that people find out that there's a wetland that might be destroyed. So getting out there beforehand and being able to map these smaller wetlands, we're able to raise their profile and understand how they work on the landscape. Mm -hmm. And I guess as kind of locals, you know, they've got local knowledge. You know, we've got local knowledge about, you know, where these small little bodies of water or wetlands are, and uh, it probably enriches the, the data pool quite a bit, I imagine. Absolutely. I think um, citizens or uh, people that are uh, living locally, living locally and they're near these areas are better equipped to uh, map these wetlands because they know where they are. And um, people that are sitting maybe in Victoria or something uh, have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I when I think about wetlands in the Kootenays, I have a I sometimes have a really hard time thinking about you know the kind of the traditional little kind of you know pond area um, because of how mountainous it is around here. Is that a is that a feature of of the Kootenays? Do you think, or is that just kind of a not not thinking uh, enough about you know where these small little pockets of wetlands might be? Well, the Kootenays, uh, it's. Um they do have a lot of wetlands up in the um, headwaters of a lot of their creeks. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a really great one just north of Nelson um, that's uh, where the, the cross-country ski hill is. Uh, so that would be considered a headwater wetland that's right. slowly feeding the creeks uh, yes. throughout the year. Um, but also uh, because of hydroelectric production, I believe we've lost about 50% of our wetlands in the Columbia Basin. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the low-lying wetlands that you would have had uh, 40, 50 years ago uh, have been inundated. And so we've lost a lot of that great riparian habitat. Right. And the hope is is that uh, we'll be able to protect what's remaining and perhaps even uh, contribute to creating a few smaller restoration um, wetlands um, perhaps where they weren't before, but where there's an opportunity. Great. So, Neil, can you describe what the kind of what the day looks like a little bit on Saturday with the with the workshop? Absolutely. So, we in the morning we talk about why wetlands are important and go through some of the classification of um, the different types of wetlands that there are uh, in BC, and then we will talk about the GPS theory because. One of the uh, one of the other objectives is to train 
citizen groups how to use their small handheld GPS units to be able to map wetlands. Uh, the nice thing is it's also a crash course for anybody who wants to uh, learn more about how to use these GPS units for doing maps in general. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go out to a, wet, a wetland nearby. We'll take a look um, at uh, what's there, try to evaluate it, and then map it with a GPS unit, come back into the classroom, and upload it onto the community mapping network, and, um, and then also Google Earth. Great. Um, so what kind of people do you think might be interested in taking this? Uh, is this for, do you have to have like some special either uh, environmental experience or GPS knowledge or? Absolutely not. It's open to the, the public. So anybody um, who has a, an interest in, in wetlands, they don't have to have any experience. Uh, they're welcome to come and learn more. Um, we've had individuals from, from high school students to consultants who've come and uh, they've all gotten something out of the course. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need to have your own GPS unit? No, we have, um, we'll have a whole, we'll have about 15 of them on hand and uh, we typically find that a, a few people will come with them as well, so we'll definitely have enough to share amongst the crew. Great. I'm thinking about a, I know a friend who's a, uh, she does this, uh, caching you know yeah uh, um, i think it uh, might be a great thing for for someone like that who's got the, that kind of hobby going you know to to take that and uh, apply it to to something like this absolutely i think you know they're already out in the field um, doing geocaching trying to find little prizes yeah and, uh, finding a wetland is definitely what i'd consider a, a prize in the, the kootenai area mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit how folks could register, get involved if they're interested in uh, in doing this? Yeah, they can give me either a call on my cell phone. Unfortunately, I'm from the Lower Mainland, so it's a 604 number. It's 604-970-9707. Or they can email me at wetlands at bcwf.bc.ca. And uh, and then the workshop takes place Saturday. Is it an all-day event? Yeah, it goes from 9 to 4. Yep. And uh, we are starting at 9 o'clock at the um, Nelson Rod and Gun Club. Great. And then from there you go off uh, into the field and then back to the Rod and Gun Club? That's correct. All right. And I see that the Nelson Rod and Gun, uh, Rod and Gun Club, they're a sponsor of the local event here. Yeah, they are. Um, uh, as a BC Wildlife Federation, uh, they're one of our members. The uh, BC Wildlife Federation represents hunters and anglers throughout the province, mm -hmm. and um, we're the largest uh, conservation organization. Um, so we're really happy to have them on board and to get their support. Great. Um, you were in Castlegar, was it last week? Yeah, we were in Castlegar last how week. Did, how did uh, that go? That was awesome. We had uh, 25 really um, keen individuals come out for a two-and-a-half-day workshop, and we were doing a lot of the same stuff, but also getting out into the field to do vegetation mapping and also to work with uh, some really great herpetologists, so people that go and study frogs and, and um, frogs and salamanders. Oh. Well, uh... That sounds uh, very interesting, Neil. Uh, see if I can make myself available for that Saturday. I'd love to uh, never actually use a GPS unit, and uh, I love marshes. Uh, you know, I still remember fondly as a kid, uh, probably some of my favorite time was uh, traipsing around, you know, and catching frogs and letting them go in ponds. And uh, I don't know, there's a real, real uh, kind of uh, sweetness about little, little bits of, of marsh wetland, I think. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, every kid should have an opportunity, and this gives uh, adults an opportunity to, to connect back with their childhood. So. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there, do you have age ranges that you're looking for to, for participants, or is this uh, something that uh, students could be involved in? I think students, this would fit right in with uh, uh, students as young as maybe grade 6 to yep. grade 7. Um, 
as long as they have an interest and they're able to pay attention in the class right beforehand for a bit of GPS theory, then mm -hmm. they're ready to go. Great. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for taking the time to talk with us this morning, Neil. Thanks very much, Terry. You're very welcome, and uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, if folks are interested, they can uh, call the studio here for that phone number or email address. So uh, I'll have that uh, here uh, for the next little bit. And uh, yeah, good luck, and uh, see, uh, yeah, welcome to the Kootenays. Uh, hope you have a great time here on Saturday. Thank you very much, Terry, and hope to see you on Saturday. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Thank and that was, bye-bye, uh, that was Neil Fletcher from the BC Wildlife Federation talking about the uh, mapping uh, mapping our marshes, um, a wetlands uh, discovery project. And, uh, yeah, if you want more information about that or how to get a hold of Neil, uh, you can give us a call in the studio, and I can just give you his number here. Once again, it's 604-970-9707.